Corey Brokaw with Buncombe County Soil and Water Conservation District. And I wanted to give you a little, little idea of what we've been up to the last year and a half. Since uh, Hurricanes Ivan and Francis hit, we had huge damage in our streams in the county. Our agency knew we had to do something, but we have a really limited budget and most of our funds need to be spent on agricultural lands. So we knew that that would just barely touch the damage that really needed to be repaired. Luckily, our partnering agency, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, stepped up to the plate and offered to pay 75% of the cost to do some basic bank stabilization work. In the meantime, we were waiting to see whether the state was going to cover the other 25%. We didn't know if that was going to happen, so Wanda Green was, was kind enough to come up with that 20, being willing to pay for that 25% uh, until the state would decide what they were going to do. So in the end, they did decide to cover that 25%. During the rest of that time, our staff was busy working on what we call damage survey reports on sites all over the county. They're either sites that we identified or were called into us, reported to us during our sign-up period. After a certain period of time, all those forms went into the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Some were determined to not be severely unstable, so were dropped from the list and we ended up with over 200 sites around the county that were going to be funded for repairs. The next step that we had to go through was to come up with engineering designs for the repairs of those 200 plus sites. And we only have one engineer who works with us from the Division of Soil and Water who covers all 16 counties in western North Carolina. And we knew poor Jeff wasn't going to be able to handle designing all the repairs for all the sites for all those counties. So it was determined that he would handle what they called our exigency or urgent and compelling sites uh, that were threatening people's homes and businesses and things. So he took care of that and our staff took care of the permitting for um, those sites. The other sites, we actually hired uh, engineering firms, one from Charlotte and one locally, to take care of the rest of the design work and the massive permitting process that went along with that. Our staff also uh, was lucky enough to have the help of Stephen Hunter from the planning department who was our man in the field on most of our sites during construction. So uh, we couldn't have done it without Stephen. During the EWP project, um, I was in charge for the south end of the county. Uh, the county was split into two different groups. There was a north end and a south end. Uh, the south end that I had consisted roughly of 100 sites. These sites ranged in size anywhere that took maybe a half a day. Some of them took probably two weeks. Some problems we ran into were uh, deadlines we had to meet. We had to meet an October 15th deadline for a trout moratorium. And this is basically having all of our work done before this date due to the spawning season for the trout and that runs basically from October to April. So we had a tough time getting that done, but we did finally get that done. Some other deadlines we ran into were shortages of rock. Uh, with all the contractors working throughout the county, there was only a limited amount of rock, so we ran into some downtime with that. So that sort of prolonged our project as well. Uh, there was weather problems. Uh, actually had one contractor that had to work at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, so the ground would be frozen because it was so wet that uh, this made it easier for him to move his equipment around and get everything done. The reason why I'm mentioning all this history and all this pain that we went through with all of these things is not to put you to sleep, but I really want to make you understand that this was a massive undertaking for a very small agency. Historically, the Natural Resource Conservation Service has handled the EWP program or the Emergency Watershed Protection Program, which is who did this work, they handled it exclusively. This is the new NRCS and they've decided that the districts and the local governments, in our case the county government, should handle that themselves. Also in the past, some of this work took up to three years to complete and this time the NRCS said that we had to complete that work in just over a year. We did that, but it was very difficult. Uh, we had so many things to overcome. We had a huge amount of the construction work actually fall in the autumn and the winter, so there were very difficult uh, weather conditions to work in. Some cases, uh, some of the permits and site approvals 
that we had to get for each site. We had to uh, get from eight different agencies. So the paperwork involved, uh, along with contracts and tracking and accounting, were, were immense. Uh, it seemed like it wasn't ever going to end, but it did. And luckily, we managed to repair almost nine miles of stream bank, which is about 47,000 linear feet within the county. And that was at a cost of about $4 million, none to the landowners. It was all covered by either the federal government or the state government. And we wanted to show you a few sites that we've actually done some work on. This site is up on Stony Fork in Barnardsville. This landowner's bank actually washed in about 45 feet and was threatening to take out her home. We used a lot of fill material, plant material. The little sticks are actually live stakes and armored the banks with some rock. The rock structure in the stream is actually called a cross vein and it directs the flow of water back towards the center of the stream, allows deposition to happen on the stream bank areas, and also takes the energy and the stress away from the banks reducing erosion. This kind of structure along with regular veins, J-hooks, and all sorts of things were used all over the county in our sites. This is another site up in Barnardsville. They had severe stream bank erosion that was threatening their barn and we came in and put some fill material in, armored the banks with some large rock, and revegetated. The uh, plants that we revegetated with, the root structure will help hold the soil in place and reduce erosion in the future. I want to thank Gary Higgins, our department director, because of the number of hours he put in over the last year and a half. This project couldn't have taken place if it weren't for his hard work. We'd also like to thank our local government and state government officials who supported us through all of this um, in getting funding to make this project happen. Also, I'd like to thank, uh, most of all, I guess the county, the citizens that signed up for this program. Without them, it would never have been a success. Uh, I actually wish more people would have signed up for the program. There was a lot of people we, did, we weren't able to help because they just didn't sign up, that they weren't aware of the program. So hopefully, if this ever does happen again, more people will sign up because it's definitely a good program and helped a lot of people. I'd also like to thank the uh, engineers. Uh, without them and the contractors, it couldn't have been a success. And they did a really great job, and I think they deserve a lot of uh, appreciation. If you'd like some more information or want to find out more about what we do at Buncombe County Soil and Water, give us a call at 250-4785.